Hey friend, and welcome back to RGD Gaming, the least toxic and most fun community in all of gaming. If you've ever played a match where you felt entirely powerless, like there was nothing you could do to win, then this game is going to be for you. I'll talk about why you felt that way, what you can do about it, and some ways to come back from it. This game is an absolute masterclass in map and objective control. You can see that we're on the loading screen, or champ select screen, excuse me, and we're just doing some bands, um, pretty standard bands. Nautilus is pretty popular, Zoe, and Zeri, and the classic no band from one of the people on our team, which is not a big deal. So you can see that somebody pre-picked Wukong. I am um, going to be picking last here. And then we got one other champion selected. And now we're looking at the enemy team. And when I'm in a draft, so I'm thinking about my main, which is Misfortune for me. should always be thinking about that. And what do I see? I see Yon and Galio as the first two picks. So high CC. Um, Galio can knock you up. He can taunt you. He can ultimate. He uses ultimate on you. Yon can stun you. And so I really don't want to pick Misfortune in this. One more champion or even just those two, and she's going to be a terrible choice. The other thing is with Wukong, he can do a good amount of damage, uh, but he has enough crowd control that we really don't need Misfortune slow that I normally bring to our team fights, and what we really want is damage. So in this case, I picked Jinx because I thought, okay, I'll be able to bring more damage than I would if I was Misfortune. And you can actually see, so they picked Braum as well. So they have three knockups that could ruin Misfortune's ultimate. So I really don't want to pick her. My next best champion is Jinx, and she ends up, you know, she's great because she can provide a high amount of damage for your team. And then we get an Alistair. You also saw our team, I think they did a, they did a little switcheroo there, which is always nice when you know, you're working together with your teammates so that you can, you know, get the positions you want, play the champions you want. And so we've got Lucian, Alistair, Jinx, Kennen, Wukong. Pretty good team fight potential. Uh, Lucian and I provide a lot of damage. Kennen does damage too, but also has the stun. And Alistair and then obviously Wukong. So our team fight's pretty good. The other team has pretty good team fight potential as well. Um, they have taunts, they have knockups, um, they've got Brahms, Brahms out. Caitlyn can provide a lot of damage. Yon, Jace. So. Pretty good teams. I, I actually took a screenshot there because it was the number two Wukong and I was pretty excited to be playing with him. Um, so you can see this is a relatively high, you know, ELO match. And we probably have two challengers on the other team. So that's really what I'm looking at is, you know, the, these people that we're playing with are probably pretty good at their respective positions and or champions. So we want to be playing our best. Now, to start out, I'm going against a Caitlyn, so what I really want to be thinking about is farming up as Jinx, avoiding her first ability, I don't want to get hit by Brahm's first ability so that way I get stunned, and Alistair should just play around me and play a little bit passively, um, even though he kind of wants to engage and get some burst damage on the enemy, uh, but really he should be playing around me just because I'm a late game champion and um, Kate and Brom can, you know, if they get one of us or if they were to get me um, and kill me, Alistair really can't do much against them, especially with Brom's passive where he can stun somebody. So if you get a 2v1. That was pretty fast that they got there. Um, not exactly what we want, but that's okay. And so you always want to, right when you start off, watch out for Kate's love doing that first ability. So always be ready to dodge that left or right. Um, it, that happens almost every single match. They love starting it off and maybe doing one or two autos and then using that first ability on the wave. So always be aware of that. And we can see, we're just going to let this come in, take the easy farm, and yeah, not really a big deal. We've got Wukong on our side and we can probably imagine that their jungle is on the opposite side of the map. And so Alistair is a little bit deep, but has a pretty good headbutt. And we're able to get some good damage on Braum. So it's a good move, Alistair. I like that. Kate pops our 
honey fruit, but that's okay too. Wukong's pretty close, so he should be aware. Um, he can early gank. He's got good mobility, and so he can always get in there. And let's see, just watch that Kate first ability. Um, because she's trying to hit you with it, and you saw me sort of duck the opposite way that she thought I might be going in order to get around it. So just make sure you're watching the abilities of the enemy team. You don't want to get hit. And so I'm pinging now that the enemy's missing. I don't know where Braum is. Uh, he came back, uh, so that's okay. But if he was rotating to mid, we really want our mid lane to know that he's coming, so that way they know not to engage or take a fight there. And now we've got... Alistair jumping in, doing a little bit of damage, and so I'm trying to lock them in with my choppers, throw them behind it, that way they get stuck. Um, they didn't, but that's okay. And we're fortunate that Wukong was able to do an early rotation, get the first blood, and that's always a good start for us. And now you can see that they're resetting, so what am I doing? I'm trying to stop the reset just a little bit. Alistair's doing the same thing, make sure we get the farm, and here we actually kind of catch them which is good. I'm able to hit him again with my second ability and then poke him a little bit. And now what we really want to do is just power farm this wave, get back to base, get our first shop in, and then go from there. And we also have our rocket, so we're going to be then watching the... oh shoot, the, <laughs> the map Sometimes you gotta back off a little further. So we do have our rocket, so we wanna make sure that we're watching our map and aware of when our team is fighting so that way we can fire the rocket and hopefully get a kill or two across the map. Engage. All right. And Kennen's pinging, but by himself. So that's okay. Wukong's on his way, so hopefully we're aware of that. And if I can land my second ability, which I do, and then I get rooted, I think it's my first day, but that's okay. Um, so, not a big deal. If I wouldn't have got rooted, it might have won a little bit better, but it seemed like they had vision somewhere, and they knew that we were coming for them. Um, and then that was a good ping, the danger in the top lane. Unfortunately, Kennen goes down, but good ping to let them know. Um, you, you always want to be pinging your allies, even if it's across the map. Just, you know, you don't know what they see or what they're focusing on. And sometimes when you get focused on the wrong thing or you're focused on fighting or farming or whatever it is, you don't always see what's going on. And so here I threw my choppers. We've got Wukong coming. He's able to knock them up. And I fire off my rocket. And we're able to get one kill. And so that's good. Got our first kill. Now we want to reset. Get our first full item. Be aware of Rift Herald and Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. And start trending in the direction of, um, you know, ideally Dragon. I like taking Dragon first. I know some people like Rift, so I'm pinging that I'm going to Dragon. And what I'm really hoping is that Wukong and everybody else on the team shows up there um, to to take dragon you can see wukong's going up mid trending towards dragon and we should just clear this wave it would look really funny if we didn't so what we want to do is clear the wave and wukong's able to knock up kate and so that's good we're able to get one kill i get my choppers down so there's really no escape and now the first thing that you're going to see here um, that I mentioned from the beginning of this video. So what's happening? Wukong is running towards Rift Herald because their team is running towards Rift Herald. And so now we've got three people rotating towards Rift. We had just killed two of them. So they got a 3v3 over there. And I'm actually pinging for Alistair to get out of there because I want him to start heading over there too. So that way we have four people against their three. And if you know the remainder of their team shows up, we'll still have a you know, 4v5 rather than a 3v5. And so I'm heading over there, and so you can see the way that Wukong was aware of what's going on on the map. So he gets the kills, and then he heads immediately to Rift Herald, knowing that they're not going to come fight us, and they don't have enough time to get there anyway. And you saw me, I was at Rift Herald, and I didn't just stand there taking it, I went to where the fight was, so that way we could win the fight, and now we can take Rift Herald. Um, so really want Kennen to be 
heading this way, Kennan and Lucian, uh, because now the, they're respawning, and so we've got some action here, and we do have a fight, so it's a good thing that I was here, because we probably would have got wiped if I would have just hung out in bot lane. And we're able to secure Rift Herald, and you can see my second item. I like Runin's Hurricane on Jinx as a second item, that way I can switch to rockets and fire through rockets all at once. And don't be afraid to tell your team good job every so often. You know, they want to hear it, even if they know they're doing a good job. It's nice to hear. Um, I quite often do that, I think, and feel that it just greases the wheels of, uh, you know, gamesmanship. And people probably, at worst, they don't care. And at best, they actually do like it. Here you can see me. I'm just waiting an extra second or two. I want Alistair to be able to engage on Kate. I don't want to get there and scare her off. And so we're trying to catch her. She has to burn flash. Had she saw me and maybe started backing off, she could have maybe just used her third ability to back off rather than having to burn flash. But now she does not have flash. And so um, she's just a little bit easier to kill. And now we're, we really don't have a wave here. And we're just kind of hanging out, which I don't like to do. What I should probably do is take a jungle camp and then rotate. Uh, but you can see I'm able to hit Kate with my second ability and now shove this wave in. And hit Brom. And now there's really not a whole lot we can do. I mean, Alistair's going to engage. Let's see. I can see that Wukong is coming. But now we've got a four versus two and we were overextended. Uh, so that was unfortunate that we overextended the way we did. I thought we had Wukong. I think Alistair thought the same thing. But Wukong still ended up rotating. Lucian's way back there. Let's see if he can get a kill. He's kind of out of position there too. Uh, but Wukong goes in for the 4v2. He's able to get a kill, which is pretty crazy. And then he alts. And I'm aware of what's going on. He was able to get a double kill. Fire my rocket and miss, unfortunately. Um, so there's a little bit of a bold move by Wukong there to go in, but he... You know, did a pretty good job. I mean, getting two kills for one is good, even if he went down. And so now what I'm looking at... Oh, Alistair, chill. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So you see that Wukong's telling Alistair, just relax a little bit. I mean, we are ahead. Really don't need to get too crazy. And now hopefully we can get this turret. You can see Braum coming. So what I'm trying to do is get the turret, and then that way I get the attack speed. Uh, but we're a little bit overextended, and now I'm really just trying to get out of there. Um, and hopefully Alistair can get out of there, but again, Wukong and Lucian are rotating. So we'll actually have a 3v3. Wukong's able to get in there, uses ultimate. And that, see, that's great map awareness from both our jungle and our mid lane to know that they should be rotating because we are overextended. So we overextended a bit, but our jungle and our mid knew that. And we're able to rotate and then get a couple of kills off of it. And you can see me fire another rocket. I'd love to get this kill. Let's see if I do. And I don't, unfortunately. But that's okay. So now I'm looking to really group a little bit with my team. I don't want to do anything too crazy. I just need a little bit of gold. And so I'm going to take a jungle camp. And then I'll be able to go back, shop, get Runin's Hurricane. And then I'm really, you know, I'm ready for a team fight. I can fire, you know, use my rockets and fire multiple rockets. And so that's all I'm really doing here. I'm not trying to steal my jungle's camp. He's actually doing really well. Uh, but I just want to be able to get my first item. And then I'm pinging that I'm going over to Rift Herald. And you can see that we actually got a lot of pings going on. So we're going to go to Rift. And something you I see quite often is people just heading back to lane. You don't want to do that. You want to group with your team. And you can see the enemy team. So Wukong engages, uses his ultimate. And I'm trying to back off so that way I don't get killed. Wukong goes down, but we are able to get one kill. And now I've got the attack speed. And so I really want to keep fighting. We're able to get another kill. And... I do hit with my rocket, but unfortunately it's not enough, but let's see if we can get him. And we're able to get the kill. So now what should we be doing? Taking both objectives. Uh, so you're going to see this again, and I was talking about controlling the map. So Kenan and I take go to take Rift Herald. 
Lucian goes over to Dragon. And so we have timers expiring. And so now we've got three people on the enemy that are heading towards Lucian. So I need to start going over there. And you see me leave Kennen. There's a thousand HP left on the Rift Herald because I need to get there because Lucian is in trouble. And you can see I start getting there and Braum is coming. I throw down choppers to try to slow him down. We're able to get the dragon, fortunately. And I'm able to hit Braum with my second ability, slow him down. I fire a rocket, I get a kill, so now I've got my attack speed bonus, and I'm firing multiple rockets into the enemy team. And we get another kill, and just Braum left, and we close it out, and the enemy quits. They had no chance against us. We were ro out rotating them, we were always ahead of them in every single objective, we were winning fights, we had dragons, we had rift heralds, and so. That's what I'm talking about where being one step ahead of the enemy. What could they have done? They needed to pick one objective or one place, group as five, and fight us on that. If they didn't group and get together, they had literally no chance against us. And so what were they doing? They were just chasing us the entire match. We had a great, uh, great coordination from Wukong and a really good match. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I see you on the Rift and GG.